Welcome everybody to Spaghetti Wednesdays, Deadlands Edition. Exactly. So, I don't want to beat around the bush. So we're going to get started. It is maybe 4.35 a.m. at this time. You are, honestly, in the middle of nowhere, for the lack of a better terminology here. Both Willem, Will, William, yeah. let me get out all the syllables there, and uh, Gapita, I apologize if I butchered that, I will get better at it have been invited out here by your contact in the Twilight Legion. It is on top of a mesa overlooking some no-name village. Doesn't really matter. He has a table set out, three chairs, plus one for himself. It's quiet. This individual, as he looks over, probably early 40s, short black hair, standard attire for what you're used to seeing out here. Hat placed down on the table. Thought there was going to be three of you. Thought so, too. I didn't know that. Well... Devil waits for no man. So, the reason why we called you out here... You accepted the job. But accepting a piece of paper, something written on a piece of paper is much different than seeing it for yourself, I would, I would say. kind of looks over at you, trying to judge any responses. Put my flask in my lips, take a little swig, screw the lid back on. You asking again? Making sure your... your penmanship is as good as it, you, as it should be. Now, as the paper said... This thing shows up in a deadlines. We can't track that. However, what we have been able to track is the end of the line each night. He strikes a match and lights a cigarette. Look down at the little village beneath us. I assume there's a is there a is there a track running near it? There is not. So where do we get on board? <sighs> That's the tricky part. Right now, we are. What, sunrise around 5.36 in these parts at this time of year? Hour to 30 minutes out. Till this thing hits this little... I don't even know if village is the appropriate word here. And you're gonna get to see firsthand why this is a problem. So, at this point, he reaches underneath the table, pulls out two glasses, 
pours some brownish liquid into it. Might as well have a seat. Hopefully your friend shows uh, up I, in the next, in time. I'll take mine, kind of swirl it around, give it a smell. It is... That type of whiskey that if you drink, you die penniless. Mm. The hell did you get this, boy? Got some connections. What about you? Looks over at me. Just oh him. Just drink it, down it. So once you see this. We'll talk about how to maybe get on board. It's the best plan that we've got so far is you're going to have to intercept it while it's in motion. Instead, if we can give you where it's going to end up, we can't really tell you where it's going to come from, so that's going to be the tricky part. I hate giving you a lot of unknowns in this. If it was easy, you wouldn't need people like us. Take the shot, take that whiskey, shoot it back. Cringe a bit. Look at the, look at the glass and look at him. Shit, son, that's devil's brew. I could strip the paint off a stagecoach. That's the point. So. We haven't discussed your payment either. Kind of looks at both of you. Say, are we gonna discuss it or to not have to drink another shot of that I shit did. you put in my glass? I'd get it. I'd take a one-way ticket to perdition. <laughs> I'll get my own flask and put some more back. And put some in the glass out of my own. <laughs> he smirks. So right now. Now, this isn't to cause any sort of competition, but right now, we got about 3k on the table. To be split amongst the three of you. Now, I really wouldn't recommend you pushing somebody under the train to get an extra cut. Rather unsportsman and is just going to make your job a whole lot harder. He, he doesn't seem to type and I take a sip. But is there anything you would want on top of that? Say, say I can't rightly put a price on saving souls and Banish in the dark now, can I? Not asking you to put a price on souls because you are quite right. What I'm asking you to put a price on is your time. And, well, well, I guess maybe I'm asking you to put a price on your life because this is going to be a hell of a ride. Ain't my life. It's a lord's life, and this ain't a job, it's a calling. I'll get it done. They can deal with the currency. So, if you won't ask for extra, I will. 
Go right ahead. See, my expertise lies in which I made an oath to get there. And seeing as this is a machination of more modern times, they won't appreciate that. So, it's like 500 a lot to ask for. 250, 250. 250 extra for me. He takes a long drag from his cigarette, flicks it over the side. Or flicks the ashes, not the entire thing. One hundred extra. One fifty. Why don't you give me a roll for that? For sure. <clears throat> I that would be persuasion, I imagine. Absolutely. In which I, I take a, a penalty as an outsider? Let me see. I believe so. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you're a, it is only a minor, so just confirm that real quick. I think, I think, I think it's a minus one. Minus one. Okay. I think the, I think the major I think the major's minus two. I'm so you gonna... click the word persuasion. All right. Yeah, if you just uh, you click the thing, it'll, the it'll roll it. Yep. Let's see. Well. Making sure of everything. So that would Hello. take... Hello, that would be technically a 1 and a 5, since it's not calculating the minus in there. And it is a minus 2 for the minor. Yep. Yeah. 100. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. So. What's that going? Hang on a second. Josh, the jinx, as it were. Yes? Why exactly are you showing up late to this meeting? I'll let, I'll oh, let you decide. Uh, the I don't have a great answer, I'm afraid. <laughs> I got sucked into a video game is my answer. I'm not asking the player, I'm asking the character. Oh. Uh... He had an altercation with a particularly orny donkey. Oh. At the same time, you hear a distant train whistle. You also hear the braying of a very, very stubborn beast of burden as it slowly saunters up the individual looks up and goes you're almost late for the little show that we got going on here Josh the Jinx I take it he's he kind of, nods that's he's right of, he's, sh he's shouting out well train whistle goes off again I don't got a lot of time that thing's gonna come screeching in here any moment so as I told the others it's different signing up for something and not knowing what you're dealing with so that's what we're doing here and current pot on the table is 3,000 split between the three of you. Your friend over there nods over to 
Agapita has negotiated an extra hundred for herself. What about you? You know what? He raises his he raises two fingers with the cigarette in between them. Hold that thought. And before he can even get the word out, the train whistle goes off again. I was gonna say, while they're talking, I'm looking over the horizon seeing if I can get a direction. Because we're not near a train track, and I know what we're expecting, so... You are... southeast. By your guesstimation, using the North Star of this town. This thing is... probably coming from the Northwest, <laughs> so straight at you, as it were. And in the time span that... Josh has showed up with the first train whistle to now has only been maybe three to four minutes. And something that sounded exceedingly distant at first now not only sounds close, but you can see it on the horizon. This kind of greenish black smoke billowing up from its main steam engine. You rolling something? Me? No, no, no. I was looking at something. Okay. Just want to make sure. The next Looks few like moments. It's about time. Everybody now can see this train in all of its glory. It's roughly okay. about seven cars long after the engine. definitely looks more sophisticated than most trains that you see but nothing about it screams abnormal well two things scream abnormal one the greenish black smoke that is billowing out of it and two it's not running on any tracks and if people want to, go ahead and give me a notice roll. I like noticing things. <laughs> As do I. There we go. <clears throat> oh, I rolled already. Uh, I did it twice, my bad. Uh, a four. Four, nine. Ooh. And a fail. We exploded. Okay, so. William. You notice, no train tracks, and this thing is hauling. Since we have... We have a nine here. I'm gonna give you a little bit more. If you had to guesstimate... This thing's probably pulling at least 150, 200. If you had to put a number on it. Faster than any horse you've ever seen. In the next few moments, right as the sun peaks up above the horizon, this thing hits the town and immediately goes under. And you feel it. Now this is obviously more of a mechanical and meta statement. Let's just say the fear rating went from a two to a dead land. What and just that happened? And that town no longer exists. The buildings exist, but it looks like they haven't been inhabited for at least 10 years. The 
The guy leans back. This time he does toss his cigarette completely over the edge of the mesa. And that is why we need to deal with this. I'll take the last of the whiskey in a big shot and stand up. Kind of pull my duster back so that uh, so that my revolver is showing. Say, well, let's get on board then. Well, might as well. He rolls out a map in front of everybody. So, place it, pulls out a piece of charcoal, puts a big X over the town that was once here. Now, if you notice, and he starts drawing a th as lightly as he can with the charcoal drawing lines. This, there is a pattern to this. The next town should be the town known as, pull up my map here. Pine box. That's where it's going to hit next. If it, if everything holds, and we have no reason to believe it's not going to hold. As I had told William and Agapita here, before you arrive, Josh, we can figure out where it's going. Problem is figuring out where it's, what direction it's going to come from. That's what we're going to leave up to you guys. Now... That being said, I wouldn't recommend being on that train when it, when sunrise hits. Well, this train never stop. Have you ever tried keeping up with it? I don't Can't know. say I have. I don't know many things that can. So it's not going to be easy. I don't honestly know if it stops. We haven't witnessed it stopping anywhere. Now, with this new dead land, he starts putting squares around certain locations. Most, a good portion of those squares are around X's. These are nearby deadlines. So, yeah, I guess you have a couple of options. You can see if you pick the right deadland, or find a large cluster of deadlands. and then kind of put yourself in between where they would collide, as it were, and Pine Box. He leans back and looks at the three of you. At this point, why don't we paint a little word picture? What does he see at when he sees William? William is late 40s, early 50s. Um, he, uh, he looks like a man from a time when fire and brimstone sermons were the normal, um, which might just be right now. Um, kind of got a, he's got an immense presence about him, uh, sharp eyes, blue, kind of had this light in him, deep, booming voice, um, dresses uh he's got black shirt with a black vest and a black tie and a black jacket and black just black on black all the way down uh very much like um uh very much like the the man in black in westworld as far as the dress 
uh, is concerned. Um, he wears one of the uh, circle brimmed hats, though not a not a not a bucket hat or or, or a traditional cowboy hat. It's kind of it's kind of the, the flat top circle brim, kind of pulled down a bit. Um, and he uh, one thing that most would note is uh, uh, under his collar there's a there's a white strip. Uh, and he has a, a cross hanging, uh, a yellow gold cross uh, hanging around his neck. Uh, and uh, odd, odd, uh, most people consider it odd for a man they see those things on. Uh, but he's also wearing a, gold, a gun belt with a number of preloaded speed load cylinders. He's got a, a 44 star revolver at his hip. Uh, a Bowie knife uh, on the other side, and a sawed-off shotgun slung around his back, double barrel. Josh the Jinx, what does he see when he looks at you? He sees a lean and wiry man, a man wearing a long coat with many pockets on it, with where there were probably emblems stitched into the fabric at one point on the shoulders that have since been torn off. He has a mustache and a bit of a beard. His hair is dark brown. And the look in his eyes seems almost as if it's not a fearful look. It's almost one that is sort of assessing whatever it looks at to think exactly... How much trouble is this going to be? And for the most part, it seems not exactly concerned otherwise. This looks like a dude who's sort of been through a fair bit and has sort of had the fear beaten out of him. The only weapon you see on his person is the revolver that's strapped to his hip. That and, uh... For some reason, he seems to be trailing black feathers, and there is a small congregation of uh, ravens just outside. Agapita? When he looks to Ag Agapita... Agapita, thank you. Um, there we go. Correct me yeah. sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he sees a woman in nearing her um, 40s, like 30, 39, 5'5". Five, five. She's got long locks of black hair with some graying streaks. Um, she has a white um, fabric that's tied around her forehead, and it matches the white dress she's wearing. Uh, and she has slung over her shoulder a bag, and you see like some stuff just like not quite small enough to fit within it, so it's like hanging out of it. So like a bedroll, like a canteen's like tied into it with like, some rope. Um, and she has on her back just a spear. Uh, in her in her like what do you call it on her hip? Uh. A dagger and uh, like right at her lower back, a quiver with some arrows, and actually next to the spear on her back, she has a bow. So, yeah, that's what you see. Oh, uh, brown skin, uh, brown eyes, very um, stern look about her, her face. So, I got one question for you before the three of you head off. And do whatever you need to do to prepare for the day, or, well, I should say the night. As I told you when, when you showed up, getting a fancy paper asking you to do a job is different than actually seeing it. Ain't no shame in backing out. With everything laid out to bear, as it were. Well, props for honesty.
cowardice is a devil's play thing, son. When a man chooses fear over action, he's already given the enemy half the battle. What did you say the name of the next town that's in this thing's way is again? Pine Box. Pox. How do you spell that? Pine Box. Pine and Box. Is that a place that Josh would know anything about already? You slow, son. Why don't you go ahead and give me... Where is Josh from originally? Is he from Texas? No. You know it's a place on the map. I don't even get to roll my common sense for this. Common sense is... You would... Outside of knowing that it's on a map, I mean, that's your common sense there. Oh. Fair enough. All right. Okay, so... What else could we be wanting to do? Making our way over there. Well, I mean, I guess it is kind of a matter of time, isn't it? Yeah. A day to get there and prepare for the train's arrival. Well... I wouldn't recommend being in the town when the train hits. <laughs> we want to be between one of the deadlands and the town so we can jump on that train moving as fast as it is and it can rip our arms off in the process. One thing we have noticed. It's better to intercept it closer to the deadlands. This thing isn't instantaneously getting up to that speed. So you want to be a little closer than further. I stated that makes things difficult though, the closer you are, well, we don't know which dead land is going to pop out of. Could be this one. Makes sense to go to the one closest, yeah. don't it? Uh Here's a question. How is it you're so sure you know where it's going to pop up next? We're not. Um, we don't know which one. It's. He got a bunch of X's and squares on his, on his map there. So he's sure where it's going to decimate next. What he don't know is where it's going to come from. We're taking a guess. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to... Uh do a roll on the map to see if they can't maybe he just can't suss out the pattern maybe there is one yeah what sort of roll would that be probably fall under notice or notice smart. I could see notice academics um <laughs> Notice is like the pattern's there and no one actually saw it. So I guess that works. I stated notice, academics, maybe a cult. I mean, realistically, okay. there's several different roles that could be made here that make sense. I'll give notice a shot. Yes, I'll you do. Oh, yes, you do. Wow. With a raise. Yeah. Um, I okay. would like to do something a little okay. different. Um, I would like to roll a cult, but to support, um, Josh, because I know, uh, Josh or, uh, Agapita, either one. Um, but I'd like to ba basically make an occult roll to see if I can support them to give them a bonus rather than making my own independent roll. All right. Um, they've they've already rolled. I was going to say Josh because he was specifically asking for a notice roll. So I was going to say him, but they've already rolled. I see the results. So now I don't want to feel like I'm metagaming it, but that was the idea. No, I, I was going to say. Um, tell you what, go ahead and give me that occult roll. And if you succeed, I. Let's see. 
T typically a success is a plus one and a raise is a plus two. Yeah. Unless there's unless there's situations. So if you uh just one. Seven. Success. So I was gonna say that could that could boost Josh the Jinx to maybe a second raise there. Because eight twelve, yeah. If you would have gotten a raise on that. Yeah. Yeah. However, that's not the case. So Yeah. Worth a shot. With the three of you looking at it, there is each one of the squares, which is a dead land that it's emerged out of, as it were. Inside is a number. The best you can, this number addresses. in relation to the others. So, the square marked with one is where they first found it. The first dead land it came screaming out of. Two is the second one, three, so on and so forth. It never hits, this, it never does one dead land more than once. Which leaves you with three options. Two coming in from the north of Pine Box. And then the one where you are, which is to the south of Pine Box. Hmm. Well, I should hmm. say you are Southwest of Pine Box, to be exact. Southwest West. I've, I've got ideas, but I don't think Reverend Barnett's is that smart enough to think of them. So. Well, we got a one and three. Might as well just sit here then, yeah going to hit them all eventually, but we'd rather deal with this sooner. Yeah, but we need to be in the right one when it pops up to hit Pine Box. Well, how close are they? All these dead lines. The two to the north? Uh, what was your role? Your role was notice? Okay. The two to the north are probably within guesstimating because you're looking at a map. Distance, distances aren't exact, exact. Hmm. Well, looking at roughly about 60 miles between the two and about 90 to 100 miles from Pine Box. Mm. This one's about 150 miles or so. So you're more, as stated, Wait. you're, um... Southwest-west, there we go. I kept wanting to say west-west-south. <laughs> and I was like, that's not right. Slow as it may be when it gets going. Even on horseback. If that ain't close enough to catch it, we picked the wrong one. Yeah. <clears throat> Means we'll have to sell for catching it when it gets to its next location. Whichever that is. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's watching, but I don't I don't think that's how it's gonna work. Uh, trouble is they're all so far away. We might still get the wrong one. Huh? Does this every night? Every night for the past, and he kind of looks down at it. Ten weeks. Have we evacuated the town? We didn't start knowing that we could predict its pattern until 
last week, we weren't even, or last night, we weren't even, we weren't entirely sure. The pattern was just beginning to form, as it were. Now, however, Pine Box, a li little too big. We can get, so we can clear 30, 35 miles on a horse. Maybe 50 if we don't mind it being dead at the end of it. But that ain't going to get us to either one of the other ones anyway. So we might as well just set camp here and wait for tomorrow night. Killing the horse don't do us no good. We want to board a train from it. And, uh... Killing it might not get us there in time anyway. Yeah. I mean, we can obviously offer a little bit of assistance if you want to get there in time. You got something faster than a horse? He, he looks over at Josh the Jinx as if he's almost insulted. You got something <laughs> faster than a horse that ain't powered by that green demon rock. Okay, now... Now you're going to scotch too far there. I, s I didn't say I nothing about that. Out. Just making sure. Uh, yeah. Since you're asking, yeah, it's powered by that green screeching rock, as you put it. Well, the cool alternative thing. is letting people die, right? Well, it could as likely start from here as it could either one of them. Look. And at this point, he kind of stands up. You got a fair point. Your compadres there also have a fair point. After Pine Box... We're expecting it the next town over. One big thing is, is... Targets are getting bigger. If the pattern holds... After Palm Box... It's gonna hit... I am so gonna mispronounce this just because it is... Nako, I cannot pronounce that. The town right next to Pine Box. <laughs> I cannot pronounce that. Then it's going to hit Waco, Teller, and it's going to probably start hitting the big cities. Mm -hmm. And... I don't need to tell you if it starts hitting the bigger cities how bad that's going to be. It ain't good. That's no put me in mildly, friend. Is there... Kind of looking over the map. What's the maximum distance between a dead land and a target that there's been so far? Or, or I guess the follow-up to that all at once would be, does one of our three choices fall outside of what has up to this point been the maximum distance? Why don't you go ahead and give me... I feel like that's an academics role, which I don't know if it's going to be great. I don't think it's going to be great for Willem. No, it's not great at all. <laughs> oh, I got a zero. It's not negative. <laughs> no, he just kind of stares at the map for a bit. He rolls that over. He, 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 there's just like this thought on the tip of his tongue or the tip of his brain. He's looking at the map. He's like, there's... Ah, to hell with it. <laughs> it never even bring that. That just doesn't. Yeah, no. Nah.
So, look, do we camp or do we move? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to leave the three of you to it. Okay. He, he goes ahead, stands up. Map shores. Much obliged. You can keep trying if you miss it tomorrow night. Guess you got another opportunity the next night. However, each time you're going to have to live with more and more people being drugged to God knows where. I w he, he lifts up the glass from under the table of the whiskey that he served. He kind of shakes the bottle. It's now about half empty. I live with that. That's why I drank this. Puts his hat on. That ain't it. whiskey, friend. That's liquid damnation. He tips his hat. Well, you might be able to see why I'm drinking it now. With how many times this has happened. How many times we've had to see it happen. Where we haven't had any sort of guesstimate. Any sort of plan. So, you know what? I'm gonna go. Catch the car back to Houston, as it were. I'm gonna drink this liquid damnation, as you called it. I'm gonna try to forget about those lives that we've lost in the meantime. I would say fried. <laughs> huh. You guys be safe. You're in a well, deadlands right now. I ain't keen on boarding a car powered by that demon rock. So how's about we just set up camp? Here? How about we just set up camp here? And hope no. we got the and hope we got the one in three. What do you mean no? We need to at least try. If we don't do anything, we're essentially consigning those people to death. We have we're to doing. see if we can stop the train before it arrives. We're doing something. Yeah. This is one of the three places the train might start from. Okay, that's fair. And but if the other if I remember correctly, to board a, a demon a demon rock powered car to get to. So let's do let's just do the one that don't involve burning screeching soul rock to get there. Yeah. All right. Well, are there any other preparations that we can go through? I don't. Uh, I don't typically have much of that. I'm going to point down to the town, kind of below the mace and say, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to see if there's anything left to pray over. And if there is, I'm going to give them the prayers. Hmm. Good, good, good book warns against idleness. And I don't intend to let, uh, let that sin set in right now. Well, you do plus, that, there's, plus, there's probably a soft bed unoccupied in one of them houses I can sleep in instead of this hard ground. As he kind of like stretches and cracks his back. Mm, you get used to sleeping on the ground after you do it enough times. Yeah, till you get old enough, then you get unused to it. You think you're ever going to die old in this line of work? Personally, I think I'm going to die on a train. Uh, well, uh, let's hope you're wrong. Cheers. Cheers. Worst case situation, there's an empty saloon down there. Y'all coming? No. Maybe they got maybe they got one of them player pianos. We can Might as well go. I haven't got anything better in mind. 
My little visitors can come find me whenever. They don't... Oh. Your... Your raven uh, friends. Let's just say in the background they have been... Nervously chattering. They do not want to be here. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, I'll catch up. You give me a minute. Right. I'll go along um, with it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ticket Josh can't actually speak to the Ravens necessarily, but I, he probably gets enough of what it is that they're thinking and doing to sort of understand. Anything I'll, in particular you can glean? I'll look at that asshole brand donkey he brought up and say, we'll give you 10. <laughs> and then I'll turn around and walk off. I am not <laughs> with him. As... As you look up, there are, have been a couple of trees. Roll me notice. Corn. Hmm. Roll me notice. Yes, sure. <laughs> I seem to be rolling that a lot. When you first showed up, the few trees that were around here were still relatively alive. Now they look like gnarled trees that have probably been dead wood for at least five, ten years. Almost like the bark has peeled off of them like skin from a festering wound. Oh, that's not good. The only solace the three of you have is that the sun slowly rises above the horizon a little further. Thanks for watching Spaghetti Wednesdays on the Domain Gaming, the actual play series where we throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. You can also support us on Patreon and get access to exclusive content, behind the scenes, and more. Tune in next week for another thrilling adventure on Spaghetti Wednesdays. Let's see what sticks this time. <laughs>